Yeah, I don't actually want to get rid of my brain immediately, but I don't care you know, after I'm dead, I really don't. Uh, 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 but I don't like thinking about that. Memento Mori, the reminder of death. You're doing very well, those pictures are looking great. We're just gonna do sort of calibration type scans before we start the next part. You know, like all young people, I was immortal <laughs> at once. <laughs> And like all people of my present age, um, I notice growing old. And when I had a stroke five years ago, I really noticed it was an abrupt discontinuity in my life. So this is a whole brain. You could, you could see that there are two halves, two hemispheres. So you could see there's the left and the right hemisphere. So the region that we're particularly interested in, in uh, John is the region somewhere over here. It's the parietal lobe. Because as you know, um, different parts of the brain are very involved in different functions. And of course, that's one of the things why we think it's so fabulous that we're going to be able to do functional magnetic resonance imaging with you because we want to see which part of your brain uh, is particularly active when you're thinking some of your great mathematical thoughts. I had this visual thing problem. I wasn't aware that I was being shown two pictures for the first few seconds. Okay. I only saw the that one. Okay, that's no problem. We might, uh, we might uh, try... Answering to... sort of essentially stupid questions, or well, not stupid, but I mean, is this object here a rotation of this object in some funny geometrical shape? Well, I couldn't care less whether it is or not, you know, but I was trying to uh, answer the question I posed. The, the thing that made my name as a mathematician was the discovery of this amazing uh, geometrical group in 24 dimensions. And I distinctly remember at one time sort of sitting in an armchair or lying down on the floor, I can't remember which you, exactly it was, and sort of waving my arms and legs in the air because I needed to be able to point in more directions than there are in three-dimensional space, you know. And that had more effect than the discovery of the surreal numbers. Namely, um, it affected my career. I went from being an unknown to being at the center of the stage for mathematicians, the world stage in a certain sense. There's a magazine you may have heard of called Reader's Digest. And in one of these ones, it said, are you a tongue gymnast? I was a student in Cambridge at the time. And then they gave four exercises. And it said, so far, nobody has been found who can do all four. And this sounded like a challenge to me. Let me do thick and thin. The clover leaf. Almost unbelievable. The waves. Rather than uh, just staying at the age of 25, which I did for 25 years at least, um, I'm aware now that there's only finitely much to go. Um, and it's a very, very different and rather frightening feeling. You know, so this date, the 20th of December, approached me, you know, at the 1st of December, it was about three weeks away, and it just inexorably approached me and grew more and more frightening and looming, you know. And now it's almost behind me.